So starting with this, uh, I found the email, it's in October 2015. Uh, a colleague sent it to me and said, look at this. And I hadn't heard of it before, maybe you all had. Not being a credible specialist, I hadn't. I was very intrigued, the 10 year war, what's this? So we found this brochure, we went and bought one off eBay for a lot of money, it's very, very rare. And we read it, and, it, and it's the story of um, the first 10 years of Black Sabbath's career, produced by the band. Um, and I'm going to read you a couple of quotes from it, and it's basically what the media thought about the band uh, as they started getting get going. Start with the LA Times. After seeing Black Sabbath in concert a couple of years ago, I was so convinced the band was ultimately worthless that I didn't, didn't even bother to listen to its last album. <coughs> so, that's how it started, it goes on. This is from uh, an Italian or Spanish uh, magazine called Figaro. To admit to liking Black Sabbath is about as socially acceptable as child beating. <laughs> and this one, which starts quite promisingly from Melody Maker, let's see how it goes. For some bizarre reason, 3,000 kids got off on Black Sabbath antics at Hammersmith Odeon last night. Ozzy Osbourne and cohorts had the fans on their side from the off. And for the life of me, I couldn't understand why. So we knew we could reproduce that brochure, because that would go into the box set. We knew that the 10 year war told the story of the first eight Black Sabbath albums that was uh, originally fronted by uh, Ozzy Osbourne. And that fitted very well with their tour, their world tour, which we knew was coming up, and was going to focus on those albums as well. So that was all good. And we knew in the box set, get a fantastic cover, we got uh, this amazing graffiti artist, Shepard Berry, who's a massive fan and friend of the band, to do a cover for us. Um, we put a fantastic book in there, um, all about the band, and we'll, we'll show you when it's all manufactured. It's got loads and loads of quotes, I mean, you know, the creme de la creme of the rock fraternity saying what they think about Black Sabbath, amazing selection of photos. We put two rare seven inch singles in there, uh, a reproduction tour program and a tour poster. And then the whole thing is based around those eight studio albums. So to, to make those really special, obviously we get Andy Pierce to do the mastering, so it's the best quality mastering we can get, going right back to the original tapes. Um, we did them on splatter vinyl to make it more collectible, and we painstakingly reproduced the first edition sleeves. So we've done all of that, and we're feeling like this is pretty good, but can we go any further? Because we always have to think about the fans going, why should I buy this? I've already got all these albums, they've been out several times. So the thing that a lot of people will probably wonder why we didn't do is why is there nothing unreleased on the box set? And we spent, I think, about a year talking to various collectors and specialists and going, this is unreleased, this, is, this should come out, the fans want it. And you go back to the band and talking about it. And either the band didn't want it out, or there was all kinds of legal complications why we couldn't put it out. So we didn't have anything unreleased, and we think we still need another element. And that other element is what we're here to, to tell you about today, or Alex is here to introduce some people to talk about, which is the digital sound. So we're going, well, can we produce the best quality sound ever digitally for the 10 year old box set? And my colleague Ian over there suddenly came up with this idea. I still remember the day. I thought he'd gone slightly mad. He was telling me, <laughs> how about is this thing called MQA audio and we put it on something called a cruiser stick? Now, I'm not going to say any more about that. I'm going to show you a quick teaser about the box set, and then I'm going to let Alex come in and talk to three people who are going to tell you all about uh, the audio quality, which is so important at the end of the day. Whatever a band is about, it's about its music. So, how do you hear the music sounding as good as it possibly can? So without further ado, I'll hand over. Thank you very much.